There are at least 10 reasons why Candace Owens should not be invited back to the family picnic. Number one for me is how she responded to George Floyd. Hello and welcome. And we can just get right into this because you know what we, we are going to cover today. We obviously have to cover the George Floyd trial conclusion, which is that Derek Chauvin is guilty on all counts. And I have to appreciate people that were trying to create a pressure campaign for me on Twitter saying, I wonder what Candace is going to say. Even Republicans agreed that, that this was the right call. I don't care who agrees that this was the right. I don't care if it's a Republican. I don't care if it's a Democrat. I don't care if it's a white person. I don't care if it's a black person. I am not so much of an intellectual coward that because the mob decides something, because the lie about George Floyd and the way that he lived his life has become so big that we just have to now accept it as the truth. And believe me, this is a lie. Nancy Pelosi yesterday said, quote, thank you, George Floyd, for sacrificing your life for justice. She also said, quote, that his name will always be synonymous with justice. George Floyd's name will always be synonymous with justice. You have got to be kidding me. And don't tell me it doesn't matter. It does matter. This is the most important part, that he is now becoming synonymous with justice. Let me remind you guys, I've done it before, right? When the media was spinning all the lies and the media first came out and they said, oh, George Floyd was just getting his life together. He moved to Minnesota. He got released from prison in 2014. He was just getting his life together. You remember that? Do you guys remember that media depiction of St. George who was just doing things for kids and just loved the kids and really was trying to set a good example and was just getting his life together? Until I reminded people of what his actual record was because it became apparent to me that there was a reason that they were not producing the police footage because they wanted to make sure that the lie was perpetuated around the world and repeated over and over again before the truth could get up from bed and put its shoes on. And here is the truth. Here is the person whose life and whose name is now synonymous with justice, Nancy Pelosi. George Floyd has a rap sheet, and I'm going to remind you guys of it again today. He was arrested for delivery of a controlled substance. He was arrested and put into jail. He was arrested for theft. He was arrested for theft again. He spent 10 months and 10 days in jail. He was arrested for failure to identify. He spent 15 days in jail. He was again arrested for possession of a controlled substance, less than one gram of cocaine. He was then arrested for trespassing, no forcible entry. He was arrested for delivery of a controlled substance. He was arrested for possession with intent to manufacture or distribute another 30 months in jail total. He was arrested for aggravate, aggravated robbery with a dangerous and deadly weapon. And that has really got to be the most significant arrest for me because of how sick what he did was. Ready? Here's a statement. At this time, a black Ford Explorer pulled up in front of the complainant's residence. The complainant that we're talking about, the woman, had somebody knock on her door and say that they were from the water department. And then that person forced their way into her home. And then a Ford Explorer pulled up. And there were five other black males that exited this vehicle and proceeded to the front door. The largest of these suspects forced his way into the residence. This is George Floyd. Forced his way into the residence, placed a pistol against the complainant's abdomen, and forced her into the living room area of the residence. The large suspect then proceeded to search the residence while another armed suspect guarded the complainant who was struck in the head and side areas by the second armed suspect with his pistol after she screamed for help. I should also mention that there was a toddler in the residence at the time that this happened, a toddler that was traumatized by what George Floyd did, a woman who was traumatized by what George Floyd did. Various people who were traumatized throughout the life of George Floyd. He left a wake of victims. That is what happened. He had so many victims throughout his life. But right now, the world has decided that he's just a, a wonderful human being. You're not allowed to talk about his record. You're not allowed to talk about any of things. There are children that are running around with George Floyd shirts. There are murals that have been constructed, dedicated to George Floyd because his name has now become synonymous with justice. I guess my question is justice for who? How do I do that? How do I live a life so that people say Candace Owens' name is synonymous for justice? 
It's not telling the truth. People hate that. People say you're not allowed to say it. You're not allowed to talk about who this person actually was because the media has agreed on a narrative before the truth has gotten out about who this man was. Getting his life together? Is anybody still buying that anymore? Oh, no, never mind. It actually turns out that at the time of his arrest, he had fentanyl in his system. He also had methamphetamine in his system. We also learned that the week prior, he had had an overdose. But none of that matters because now we live under mob rule. Mob rule just says that if a black man dies and a white person is around while that black person dies, it is a racially motivated crime. They've never proved that. Nothing about this was about race at all, but it doesn't matter because now George Floyd has been propped up and this is what we have to agree on. Nobody's allowed to tell the truth. Why are they doing this? Why can't we honestly have an assessment and come to an agreement, by the way? I would have been perfectly comfortable if people said Derek Chauvin was guilty of manslaughter. I'm comfortable with that charge. I'm not comfortable with the lies that have been told repeatedly about who this man was. If you care about black lives, if you're watching us thinking, Candace, I just care about black lives, then why can't we discuss black lives? criminality at the same time, because usually on the other end of black criminality is a black victim. That was the case with Jacob Blake. That was the case over and over again with George Floyd. That's also the case with, and let's talk about the person that was trending all last night and all this morning, Micaiah Bryant, is that her name? The woman, the the, the young woman that they're now saying, a 16-year-old girl in Columbus, Ohio, who was shot on Tuesday by police. Did you guys see the clip of of her mother? Uh, She was shot and killed by police because she was attempting to stab another girl. It's on camera. She was a knife-wielding maniac. But those details don't matter. Don't forget. Because her mother came out and said that Micaiah had a motherly nature about her. She promoted peace. Micaiah Bryant's mother wants you to know that the knife-wielding maniac that you saw is not who she really was. Maybe in that moment, she was trying to kill somebody. But the point that we should be focused on is that Micaiah Bryant liked to promote peace in her spare time, right? I mean, this is like, I feel like we have now tapped into fiction. Like Now we have to just accept fiction. It doesn't matter because Micaiah Bryant was black and she died at the hands of a police officer. And that's all that matters now. People want to come out and they want to support Micaiah Bryant. Maybe she too, like George Floyd, will be buried into a gold casket. Maybe eventually one day Nancy Pelosi will say that Micaiah Bryant's name will be synonymous, synonymous with justice. Let me tell you what is actually happening in America at this time. And if you're a black American, you better pay attention. Right now in America, the goal is to make sure that black people love and support criminality. That is the goal. The express goal now is to make black people believe that we should be in the streets rioting and looting and demanding justice for criminals, right? Because that is what these people are. They're criminals. George Floyd was in the process of committing a crime. I'm not saying he deserved to die. I don't think anybody deserved to die. I think he deserved to be arrested. They attempted to arrest him. Did you forget that part? Have you seen the full video of his arrest? The media refuses to show the full video that shows the police tried to put him into the vehicle multiple times, and he resisted arrest by saying, I'm claustrophobic, I'm claustrophobic, because he had just ingested fentanyl. Fentanyl, that thing that's 100 times more potent than morphine, he had just ingested it because he didn't want to again get caught with a controlled substance, as he had done repeatedly throughout his life. Let's ignore a testimony from his girlfriend who said that they were both addicted, which, by the way, that is sad. Drug addiction is sad. We can be talking about drug addiction. We should be talking about drug addiction. That would be a meaningful discussion. But instead, let's ignore all of these things that would help us fix Black America. Let's let's not talk about drug abuse. Let's not talk about drug dealers. Let's not talk about criminality. Let's not talk about why Micaiah Bryant had a knife and was trying to stab a woman to death. Let's just talk about Black victimhood. Because the discussion about Black victimhood almost guarantees us that in the future, black neighborhoods are only going to get worse. When you start celebrating criminals, that is, of course, what is going to be the end result. We're going to have more black death. We're going to produce more black failures because we're not allowed to talk about the truth anymore. And Republican Democrats are even saying that this is good, right? So let's not talk about it. It's just been agreed. The lie has been agreed upon. Don't say anything. If you tell the truth, Candace, you're a bad person. 
I don't care what I am called. Just because right now in this country we are facing a pandemic of cowardice because people are too scared once the mob says that this is what must be said and these are the only things that can be said because the media has now created a system, a successful system of propaganda where people don't even know what the truth is because the lie has been said over and over and over again. That does not mean that I'm going to back down to the truth. In fact, I think more, more than ever now, we need to have people that are willing to stand up and to say that what is happening in this country is wrong what is happening in this country is backwards. None of these people that I mentioned are heroes. People still do not know what happened on the day that George Floyd died. They, they've never even seen any video outside of the nine minute video that was played over and over and over again on loop. And they purposefully held back giving, just releasing the police cam, which would have cleared up so many of the lies. And this, this is the least racist country on the face of the you planet. You would think that former Vice President Joe Biden would acknowledge the fact that America is not a backwards racist country as he stood next to the first black man to be elected as president of the United States two times, right? This is a majority white country, 60% white country. It would not have happened. Barack Obama would have never been president had it not been for the fact that America has moved on from race, but they don't want us to move on from race that's anymore. It. And that's exactly where we're getting at. That's all they've got. And I want to get to this tweet because I, I was so physically nauseated by it. It was from the mayor of Minnesota. He says, ready, George Floyd came to Minneapolis to better his life, but ultimately his life will have bettered our city. The jury joined in a shared conviction that has animated Minneapolis for the last 11 months. They refused to look away and affirmed he should still be here today. Brandon, Minneapolis to better his life. When you want to better your life, how much fentanyl do you take? <laughs> Why are these people so lame? They're just lying. They're just making up stuff yeah. to stoke hatred and vitriol in our country. That guy was a thug. That guy was a criminal. That guy was using drugs. He's not an example of anybody. He don't represent me as a black man. And I hate that. I want to, I want to point that out. I hate when people say to me, how do you not see yourself in, in, in George Floyd? How do you not see your brother, your cousin? I don't know. My brother and my cousins aren't ingesting fentanyl, resisting. Why would I see myself in George Floyd? Why would, what person goes, I really see myself in this drug addict and this person that's been arrested and, and, and faced jail stints nine times. Why would I see, why am I forced to see myself? Because, oh, we have a, a sim similar melanin complexion. It tells you what they think of you, though. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They Just, Justice has gotten a makeover since the time of Martin Luther King. I'll tell you that for sure. And it's, it's, it's really despicable to see the way they are mischaracterizing him. I don't care how, what you think about him, whether you think that, that Derek Chauvin should have been guilty, the idea that this man should be hailed as a hero should be sickening to every single American. All right, guys, question of the day today. Should I sue George Floyd's family? Kind of thinking that it should for emotional distress. Then I think that I have grounds to sue George Floyd's estate. I have grounds to sue George Floyd's family for doing this little PR stunt. It's causing me a ton of distress. I feel angry and I feel upset with the fact that I am fighting for black America to be freed from the lies while these people are fighting to keep them in the dark. This is unacceptable. I'm really, I'm serious. I'm going, I'm going to go out and I'm going to ask lawyers, if this is legitimate, can I sue George Floyd's family? Because I should be able to. In fact, we should be able to sue Black Lives Matter. We should be able to sue the media that is clearly colluding with George Floyd's family so that they can bury the evidence. Nobody is going to shut up. And I will fight tooth and nail for people to see the truth. And that's all I have to say about that.